Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com, and today we've got some exciting news. M-Tracker 3D version two is here. Now, this means you get up to five times faster speeds, significantly more accurate results, and that means more opportunities for you to incorporate M-Tracker 3D into your workflow. All right, you ready to get started? I'm ready to show it to you. Let's check it out. Once again, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com, and today we're looking at M-Tracker 3D version two. In our testing, we found that M-Tracker 3D version two has speed increases of tracking up to five times faster, as well as more accurate tracking. So in this example here, you can see that I am standing on our infinity wall or psych wall, if you wanna call it that, uh, in our studio. Now, what we've done is we have left all of this information here so that we can track and that is really going to give us all of the um, depth and parallax and things the M Tracker needs to decide if this is uh, going to track well or not. If this was all pure white, tracking would likely still work, but it's just a little bit easier to have all this junk in there and then we're just going to mask me out. So, as always, M Tracker 3D is located in your effects. Pick up M Tracker 3D and drag it onto your clip. When you release, you will see that you've got the track button here on your screen in your canvas, as well as over in the inspector. Now, I have already gone ahead and added my color so that I can get it nice and saturated and contrasty, as well as a little bit of a shape mask because we were blowing out some of the desk there. So we did just a quick shape mask and tracked it in using the pre-built tracker uh, so that we get the detail back in our desk. All right, so with M Tracker 3D highlighted, let's go ahead and click track. All right, now that we're done tracking, again, it is just like M Tracker 3D version one. We will go over and we will click copy track. And then we can go and find the bit that we want to add into our scene. Now, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Remember, we talked about doing a quick mask over me because we want to make all of this appear as though it's a huge white room. So let's go back over to our effects and we're gonna click masks, draw mask, and add that into our scene. We want to add control points. So we're just going to click along the base here and up around me to add our tracking points. And I'm actually going to scale my canvas down just a little bit so that I can come to the outside here. And there we go. Let's go and feather that off just a bit toward the inside. So I'm going to right click this point that you can see here and we're gonna change this from linear to smooth and you'll notice if you look currently, our lines are straight. That is a linear and we want to change that to smooth and then we can have those handles to kind of round that off a bit. And that's gonna help with our psych wall. We're wanting to maintain these shadows here because that really helps sell this effect. I'm also going to change this point here to smooth so we can just round these off. Over in our inspector, we are going to drop down on transforms on position, rotation, and scale. Let's just go ahead and set keyframes as well as control points. Now we're not going to have to select all of these and add keyframes. We can just click the one keyframe button and that's gonna keyframe all of our points. And let the keyframing begin. Let's just skip ahead a bit. We're going to click and drag and move all of these over as necessary. But then we want to click and drag these over so we can maintain our shadows here. One of the keys to rotoscoping is you want to have the least amount of keyframes as possible. So we will just move down a bit more and continue to do this and then go into the center of each of those keyframes and fine tune and adjust. So we're gonna go ahead and speed this up. See you in a minute. 
All right, and now that we are done setting those keyframes, you can see kind of how it looks as we move forward. Our keyframes and draw mask just kind of grow along with our shot there. So next we're just going to go into our generators in solids and we're going to do a custom solid generator below our clip. We will highlight our generator, go into our color options and our parameter, and we're just going to select the color there of the psych wall. All right, cool. So you can see that our rotoscope is not exactly perfect here. So we need to go in and fine tune and adjust that just a little bit. Now, something else that you're going to notice because this wasn't shot at a 16 by 9 ratio you do see that here my feet begin to get cut off because of our generator that's okay later we are going to add a slight letterbox here and we will fix that so since we're done remember we have already copied our track from earlier so we're just going to go ahead and drop in our info pack number 29 that we're going to be using i'm going to highlight this clip and click x to select a range and then go to info 29 and click Q and it has dropped that into our timeline there for us perfectly aligned. Now it says no tracking data available, copy it. We've already done that. So we're going to paste that into our scene, into our title there. Click OK. I'm going to turn animations in and out off and I'm going to go ahead and change my header frame color to black as well as my title font title color i'm just going to click that black and drag it in on top we can do that the same here i'm going to turn my point off and my line off we do not need that continue down and i'm going to turn my shadows on because they look really cool and remember we're trying to kind of match the shadows there underneath our desk so we're going to click our target icon here and now you can see our gizmo and that is interacting with the environment that we tracked earlier even though we can't see it it's all still there in the tracking data i'm going to hold shift down that is going to orient my 3d gizmo upright and that's going to be a lot easier for us since we are using text so i'm just going to click about right here and let's just see how that looks Check that out, a perfect track, pretty awesome. So I wanna make this really big and really stand out. So we are going to scroll back up in our inspector to content scale, and let's just make that joker humongous. There we go. Let's bring our header position down just a bit. And we're going to do the same with our title on Y. Let's just bring that down a bit. I wanna get closer to the floor and our subtitle bring all of that down there we go and i want to bring the content position that's the that's all of my content over together as a group so i'm going to go over on x just to get it a little bit closer to me now let's see how that looks pretty cool honestly i think i still want everything a little bit bigger so content scale come up a bit Bring it over on X a bit more, a little bit closer to me. Awesome. We changed the header to V2 for version two. We changed our title to better precision and faster tracking. We are going to bring our title size down, bring that up on Y. Now I want my line spacing to be a little bit closer. So I'm just going to go down to line spacing and we can bring Y down just to get that better aligned over on X. Matter of fact, I want it a little closer to my box to be honest, I think that would look cool. So we'll come up and we're just kind of fine tuning all of this. And then here we had M tracker 3D. I'm gonna move that over on X as well. And I want it a little bit bigger. Cool, I think that looks pretty good. Cool, now I want to change the lighting on my title to be more like the desk here. 
going to come down to my light. We're going to be dealing with distance, rotation, and angle. So let's just flip that rotation to be basically backwards on the floor. And we, again, are kind of matching the angle of our shadows here. I want the light distance to not be so far away. So we are just clicking and dragging up to better match the shadows there. A bit more rotation and light angle. I think that it's too far. So there we go. Now our shadow color, we can click and we can go and select the shadow color under the desk. A little bit grungier looking. Let's just push it over towards our yellows. And I feel like we're getting a lot closer there to the color of shadows. We're gonna change our softness on our shadows again to just kind of better match our scene. Honestly, I want to click and drag up on that. And there you go, a lot better. Honestly, I still think that I want everything to be a little bit bigger. So let's make those changes really quickly. Content scale, gonna bring everything up and then continue messing with my header position and text positions. Let's check that out. Really cool, almost identical to our original composition that we put together. Now I'm about to show you a really neat trick with the brand new and absolutely free M adjustment layer. M adjustment layer is awesome, uh, of course, because it's free, but also because you can do a lot of really cool things and you do not have to make a compound clip. So we're gonna click X again and add our adjustment layer by clicking Q. Adjustment layers are awesome because anything that you do to the adjustment layer will affect the clips beneath. Open up our video inspector and we're just gonna add a crop to these really quick. So let's just go 70 on the top, 70 on the bottom, and boom, now we should not run into any of those issues with the white coming in below my feet there. Now, as technology advances, you're going to start hearing the term HDR a lot more due to uh, screens, especially on the newer iPhones. You can start to see some of the masks that we do because they are above 100 IRE. Now, we can do a more in-depth tutorial on this in the future, but I'm just going to go in. I'm going to show my video scopes. The shortcut for that is also Command-7. So let's just click Command-7 and we have our scopes. Now, you'll notice that this is clocking around 110 IRE. What you are seeing is the brightness of our psych wall there is blown out. Now, some of the newer iPhones and some of the newer screens out there will see this as a different light value than the light value that we've given our custom generator. We're just going to go to all in our effects and we're going to search broadcast safe we're going to drag this filter in on this adjustment layer and i want you to watch our histogram here once i drop that on boom you see that now all brights have been brought to 100 ire so i'm going to toggle that on and off in our inspector so you can see it now on the screen you're watching you might not notice that difference However, there is a difference and the newer screens will notice that. So anytime you're doing any sort of masking like that, especially when you're dealing with brighter areas, you will want to drop that broadcast safe on if you're not in an HDR workflow uh, because you're gonna start to see it. So let's click that. Boom, now we know that the mask isn't gonna show up. All of our brights, all of our whites are perfectly uh, where they need to be as far as brightness goes. So M Tracker 3D version two works exactly the same as M Tracker 3D version one. It's just faster and better precision, and you are going to be able to incorporate M Tracker 3D version two into a lot more of your workflow. Thanks for checking this tutorial out. MTracker 3D version two is now available from motionvfx.com. One thing I want to mention is that any new M Tracker 3D packs 
you will get the M Tracker 3D version 2 upgrade automatically. And obviously, M Tracker 3D version 2 is backwards compatible with any of the M Tracker 3D version 1 titles and packs. All right, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.